Welcome, welcome, welcome. This is Dr. Herbert Harris, and this is Success Mentorship Call, class number 162. And we do our classes on Zoom. Those who are part of the Success Mentorship Network are on Zoom, and uh, they participate in the class. And after, the, after we complete the presentation, we have a, a great discussion where ideas are shared. So if you have not joined, become a part of the Success Mentorship Network. Our topic today really flows after the topic we did last week. Last week, we talked about to be your best. What do you have to do to be the best that you can be? And this week, we're talking about nine golden keys to become a success. And the reason we put them together like this is, you know, once you make that commitment for excellence, then it's important to have a, a system, a step-by-step -step system to achieve that excellence. And so that's what we're gonna talk about today. Before we get started, a couple of housekeeping things. Number one, of course, our program is based on our book, The 12 Universal Laws of Success, of Success The Super Achiever Edition. And the information we're covering today is from pages 116 and 117. And I want to uh, really thank some of our super achievers, you know, those who've really taken the message and confirmed it and put it into action. So I wanna just thank some of our super achievers, uh, Kenya Crooks, Chiquita Jones, Leonard Hampton, Stuart Brown, and Dr. Dennis Rogers. These are people who've taken our message and put it to work. Our quote for today is very interesting. It, it, I, I like it, and it's from a lady, Brittany Burgunder, and she wrote a book, My Battle with Eating Disorders. And the quote is interesting. It says this, everyone holds his or her own key to success and happiness. It's just that sometimes you have to test out a lot of wrong keys to find the one that fits. Isn't that interesting about life? Sometimes you have to test out the wrong keys to find the right keys that fit, that work. So let's, before we go into our class, let us do our meditation so that we can put ourselves in that place in time and space so that we're open and receptive to that that we desire to learn. So let us just sit straight up in our seats for a moment. Put our feet flat on the floor. Close our eyes. Put our hands on our thighs. Take a deep breath in through your nose. Hold it. Let it out slowly through your mouth. Take a deep breath, hold it, let it out slowly through your mouth. Let us affirm, I am at peace with myself together. I am at peace with myself in this very relaxed and peaceful state. We are open, receptive, and ready to learn. Let us affirm, I am open, receptive, and ready to learn. Once more, I am open, receptive, and ready to learn. Take a deep breath. Hold it. Put it out slowly. Woo! Wow! <laughs> good morning, good morning. Hey, I needed that, folks. I really did. I feel, you know, sometimes when we do our meditation, it's like 
plugging the socket, the, your energy source into the wall. You know, when you when you have a light and, the, and the, you may have the brightest bulb in the world, but if that bulb, if that light fixture is not plugged in, it doesn't shine. And so meditation can be a way to, to plug in your light fixture so that that energy can come in and you can radiate and you can access those parts of your consciousness that you can only access when you're on a certain level of consciousness, a certain vibration level. So let's, let's move with today. When we talk about nine golden keys to become a success, I didn't call them steps because they're not steps. You know, as the quote said, a key is something that gives you access to something that you want or something that you desire. You, if you remember the, uh, the movie, The Matrix, in one of the series, it was about the key man, the man who had all the keys to open all the doors to all the secrets, to all the knowledge, to all the power. And so these nine golden keys are keys that you can use individually based on where you are at any particular time, this might be the key that you need to open the door to overcome procrastination, for example. Or this might be the key you need to overcome lack of focus. So we're gonna, we're gonna talk about these nine keys. The golden key number one is do not procrastinate. Don't wait until all conditions are right to become a success. You know, you can wait the rest of your life. Believe that you already possess the understanding, the courage, the self-confidence to take action to achieve anything you desire. Realize that procrastination is a state of mind. The interesting thing about procrastination is this. When you put off taking action that should be done right now, you cannot recapture that moment. In other words, the real damage of procrastination arises out of the fact that the world is changing. So we often use the analogy of being on the, a boat on the river of life. And we have our, our engine, which is our desire. We have our rudder, which is our value system. We have our sails, which are, are, are our attitude. We have our crew. But if you do nothing, if you turn off the engine, if you don't, stay, if you just sit there, you still move along the river of time. And so when you procrastinate, it's not that you fail to take action, it's that you lose the opportunity of that particular moment. Every moment in time is a seed from which the next moment grows. And so when you don't step up and take action immediately, when you put off doing what you should have done this moment, you literally put yourself out of cycle, often with your goodness, often with your blessings. You see, many times we procrastinate because of lack of faith in ourselves. And that lack of faith connects to self-doubt which connects to a whole manifestation of things that you don't want. Do not procrastinate. The second golden key is do it now. You see, there's always something you can do right now to take you closer to your goals and your vision. You always have the capacity to take that first step you know, you may decide that, for example, you want to build a house. Let's, let's build a house today. Well, that first step is I desire to build a house. Maybe I don't have the money. Maybe I don't have the credit. <laughs> Maybe I don't have a lot of the things that I, I may need to actually have that house manifest in reality. But I do have the ability to go out and buy a book on houses. I do have the ability to go on the, on the internet and look at some of the great houses people have built. And so there's always something you can do right now to take you closer to your goals. The key is to use your desire, your need, your ambition to motivate you, 
to immediate action. You see, in that do it now mindset, desire and ambition are key. If your desire is not strong, then you can put off to tomorrow what should have been done yesterday. When you choose to do it now, of course, you have to overcome certain negative things like thoughts of lack and limitation, thoughts of helplessness, thoughts of negativity and thoughts of failure. But a commitment to do it now means that you rise above everything and you do what you can right now with what you have to do it with. You see, we always have assets. We always have talents. Like I say, you want to build that house, that talent may be to go get some of the most beautiful magazines. Sandra loves magazines. She buys them. She cuts out pictures. But out of that, she has such a sense of beauty and decoration in a house. Whether she does or does not, she's created that mindset. And so that whole idea of do it now is, in, is critical. As you begin to create the life of your dreams, you must be proactive. It's not enough to talk. You must do. It's not enough to just do. You must do with goals, with vision, with plans, with action with purpose. The third golden key, stand on your own two feet. I'm gonna say that again. Stand on your own two feet. Don't depend on anyone or anything for your success. I'm going to say that again. Don't depend on anyone or anything for your success. <laughs> they may be depending on you. You're depending on them and they're depending on you, creating a never ending cycle of disappointment. Believe that you already have everything you need to get everything you want. That's an affirmation. I'm, I'm going to say that, and I want you to repeat it after me. And I really want you to write this affirmation down in the chat. Write it in your notes. I already have everything I need to get everything I want. Once more, I already have everything I need to get everything I want. See, that's a powerful piece, folks. Because once you learn to stand on your own two feet, you develop what I call the four selves. The first self is self-responsible. The moment you decide that if it's to be, it's up to me, it gives you a great power now, you have the ability, you remember that house? The moment you say, I want that house, then the moment you take responsibility for getting that house, you now create the vibration that starts the universe bringing to you everything you need to get that house. So I am responsible. The second self, you gotta be self-motivated. You gotta ring your own bell. Sandra's grandfather used to say, let your business wake you up. You know, let the excitement you have about the day drive you to get moving and get, get it done. See, when you're self-motivated, you don't need somebody else outside to tell you, rah, rah, cheer, cheer, get busy doing here. You make yourself, you get up in the morning, you do your own affirmations of power. I feel great today. I accomplished great things today. You see, when you're self-motivated, you're literally setting fire in your own belly. And that gives you the power now to radiate and vibrate and attract the things you desire into your life. You must be self-determined. You know, people often ask, say, say, Dr. Harris, are you a motivational speaker? And I'm like, nope. So why not? Well, motivation is a lot like a shower. You know, you can take a shower 
today is Saturday morning. You can take a shower this morning. And I mean the very best shower you have ever had. But come Monday, you might smell a little bit. Come Wednesday, people are going to start running away from you. So motivation gets you up. But determination keeps you going. I'm going to say that again. Motivation gets you up. But determination keeps you going. So to become the person you want to be, this idea of standing on your own two feet, you must be self-determined to do whatever it takes for as long as it takes till you get what you want. Thank you for the love. Thank you on, on Instagram. I see so many hearts just flowing. And, and those of you who are on, on Facebook, on Instagram, share this program. We have a few more minutes to go share it with your people, with your friends. The fourth self, you must be self-functional. Self-functional means that you have learned, you have practiced, and you have mastered the success principles. You have learned, you have practiced, you have mastered those keys to success that you must learn, practice, and master in order to accomplish your goals. When you're self-functional, you're always a student. I see my friend Kenya just joined us. And I look back over his career, he's always been a student from his football days to his coaching days to his, his personal development. He's always been a student. And each of us, we have to always be students. We have Dr. Bray, she's a, a teacher on the line. She's always a student. Every time you talk to her, she's learning something new. So being self-functional means that you're always open and receptive to new ideas, to new things, to new experiences. The fourth golden key, do not fear failure. I'm going to say that again. Do not fear failure. You know, I, I say that I, I sometimes don't even like that golden key. And I think so much about the other side, you know, when Nadia Kamenichi was uh, doing her gymnastics program and her coach, Bella Caroli, said, need a 10. <laughs> like, the only way you're going to win this thing, you got to do a perfect performance. And her attitude was, need a 10, got a 10. So maybe instead of don't fear failure, only success. <laughs> Don't even acknowledge the existence of hey, only success. And then everything becomes an evolution of success. But anyway, just dealing with what we have. To fail proves that you're trying. If you meet someone who's never failed, I guarantee you they've never tried anything. They've never accomplished anything either. Every failure is a dress rehearsal for success. My uncle, I had a great uncle, Uncle Benny, and he, he was the epitome of negative thought, of negative comments. I mean, he could find a way to say something negative no matter what. I mean, he could go out on a sunny day and the sun is shining and people are enjoying. And he'll say, why is there no rain? The plants are hungry. <laughs> okay. But Uncle Benny used to say, you just keep trying and trying and trying and failing and failing and failing. Michael Jordan said, hey, the reason I succeed is because I fail. Because I've missed 9,000 shots, I can hit the one that counts. Learn from your mistakes. The purpose of failure is to make you better. The purpose of failure is to teach you a lesson. So really, there's no, there's no failure. There's only lessons. There's either success or a lesson. Look at failure as a lesson, a necessary lesson to grow from. So you grow through your failures. You learn from your mistakes. Failure makes you get better. You know, one of the things I, when we teach our young kids today, I notice there's this tendency, everybody gets a trophy, everybody wins. To try to not, that may help the kids so that they don't feel bad for losing, but I think it takes away something within that idea of competition. It also diminishes the value of winning. <laughs> So for those who, who ran the race, who were at the top of the class, for them to get the same trophy as the one who did very little, I think it subconsciously undermines the process of achievement. Failure strengthens your desire. 
when we talk about that analogy of your life being a boat on the river of time, desire is that engine that gives you the ability to push through no matter what, to go against the grain, to go against the current, to go against the people. And failure strengthens that desire. Because each time you fail, there's a deep commitment inside that I can do this. I can do this. And you see, failure is a lot like night and day. If night is failure, then no matter how dark the night, no matter how terrible the night, no matter what negative stuff happens during the night, the sun always rises. And so the night is just a preparation for the sun. And failure is a preparation for success. Number five. Now, this is a golden key. Do not sell yourself cheaply. Do not sell yourself cheaply. You are worth exactly what you say you're worth. So guess what? Know your worth. Know your value. Know your potential. Know the value of your talents. Recognize that you are a very special individual with boundless capacity for health, for wealth, for happiness, for love, success, for prosperity, for money. So many times, if there's one thing that we really need to work on, self-esteem is kind of woven in there with self-worth. That when you value yourself, the value that you place upon your being. You know, the young people said, you demand respect. He dissed me. He disrespected me. So often it may be like very trivial things. Like he didn't look at me and say, when we talk about self-worth, we're talking about how you feel about yourself and how that feeling you have about yourself is so strong that everybody who comes in your space gets it. You walked into a room where you've seen there's certain people when they walk in, they walk in with such a presence that everybody knows, as the lady said, I don't know what somebody that is, but I know that is somebody. And so that idea of self-worth, this impacts everything you do. When you go for a job, every job application, I guarantee you, every job interview, they've asked you, how much do you want to earn? They ask you to put a value upon yourself. If you put a low value, they know that one of the interesting things about this HR piece is if you put a low value on yourself, that employer knows you're going to give a low, a low amount of performance because you are giving what you say you're worth. If you put a high value on your performance, it creates the interest. They say, this person thinks highly of themselves. They may have a sense of excellence. You have to be careful, though. Don't do it idly. In other words, if you say you're worth 100000 a year and the job description is only offering seventy or eighty, then you need to be prepared to back it up and say, well, this is why. What I bring to this position is A, I bring a knowledge and experience. I've been doing this for 25 years. I accomplished A, B, C, and D. I bring an expertise that nobody else has. You know, there, there are people who, in, even in the corporate world, when you, they are paid obscene amounts of money because they have a level of expertise that nobody else has. So know your worth because your worth will determine how the world responds to you. Number six, develop the success habit of being goal-oriented. Now, we read it in all the books. You must have goals. You must read your goals over three times a day. But what we're really saying here is develop the success habit of being goal-oriented to really approach everything that you do with the end in mind. So then, whenever a task confronts you, you want to make that task a goal. You want to write that goal down in great detail. 
it's in this process of understanding the goal, of writing the goal, of detail, detailing the goal, that you create a great sensory perception of the goal, a sensory relationship with the goal, how it works, how it feels. You see, when you have that, 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 that habit of being goal-oriented, and operative word, habit. Habit meaning something that you do automatically. You don't have to think about it. Well, I need to set a goal. No, any time you're confronted with a challenge, you make that challenge a goal. That means you, you, you write it down. That means you analyze it. Each and every aspect of it. That means you, you lay out a plan. That means you focus on that goal until it is realized. Because you see, your goals are the stepping stone to your vision. And so every goal that you set and accomplish brings you a step closer to your vision. Also, when you set goals, you develop, we call it a philosophy of completion. One of my teachers, when I was traveling on the continent, was Tiamo Rauf. And Tiamo used to say, did you? complete yourself. So what does that mean? That means did you do what was necessary to get the desired results in your particular endeavor? So if you're a personal trainer and you set out to do 100 push-ups, then did you do 100 push-ups? Or did you do 70 and make an excuse? <laughs> so that philosophy of completion is really tied in with your goal setting because you have two things. You have an attitude of completion. You have the process of goal setting and that automatically puts in the power of focus. You can't focus on anything you can't see. So you have to have a goal to use and implement the power of focus, knowing now that your goals are the stair steps that will take you to your vision. Golden key number seven. Visualize your goals and believe you can attain them. Let me say that again. Visualize your goals and believe you can attain them. You see, visualization puts into play one of your profound spiritual powers, the power of your imagination. Imagination is the seed of reality. If you can't see it, you can't be it. Albert Einstein said imagination is more powerful than knowledge because knowledge is bounded by information and what is where an imagination is completely unbounded. Your only limitation in life is your own imagination. The Wright brothers imagined that they could fly. They took action on it and they flew. Fleming, one of the great desires, I think Fleming developed penicillin. He believed it could be done. He took action on it and it happened. So this idea of imagination, this is a great power because whatever you can see, whenever you can see each of your goals clearly and in great detail in your mind's eye. And, and I recommend, you know, we open each program with a meditation and I do that for a reason. I want us to develop the habit of meditation because when you can go into the quiet place, scripture tells you go into the quiet place through meditation, through prayer. And prayer and meditation really are different forms of the same connection. When you can go into that quiet, quiet place, you can access great power. And that power can transform you and everything around you. Through your imagination, you can visualize and see how your goals, how they move, how they smell, how they taste. When you hold that vision, clearly in your mind. You know, scripture says, go into the promised land and walk the width and breadth of it. That's really visualizing what you want to do. 
what you want to be, what you want to have, and visualize it in such a sensory fashion that you know how it's going to feel. I'm a car person, and whenever I get a different car, I, and I, I, I say different, and I call it new. It's new to me. I like old cars, but they're new to me. I always visualize how it's going to feel when I put my top down and my hair blows in the wind, right? <laughs> to get this hair to blow, you better be driving 150 miles an hour. Okay. But the idea is that you can visualize anything you desire. Sometimes your vision may be hampered by past, you know, concepts of limitation, but get through that. Don't let your visions be impacted by your past failures and your limitations. Vi visualize with the impact that nothing is impossible. Nothing is unattainable. The eighth golden key. Plan your work, work your plan. We often hear that, that uh, <laughs> quote, it says, when you fail to plan, you plan to fail. You see, your plan, your success plan is the blueprint for your vision. Is the blueprint for your vision and the goals are the steps that lead you to that vision. So let's, let's look at this for a moment. We talked about building a house. So you can have an idea, a thought. I want to build a house. That's the thought. And now using this golden key of imagination, you begin to see this house exactly the way you want it to be. You, you buy magazines, you look at pictures so that you expand your, your vision. I, I love watching these men, multi-million dollar homes. It's like, man, I would have never thought of that. I was in Las Vegas and I, I stayed and I, I didn't stay there. I got a chance to tour Michael Jackson's uh, apartment in this particular hotel. I think it was like, I don't know, five or 6,000 feet. But anyway, he, on the top of the hotel, he had a swimming pool that went from the living room out onto the terrace. Now, if I'd never seen that, I'd have never thought of that. I, I, that would not have been, have been a possibility, but just seeing that, I don't particularly want one, but it's just good to know that it's possible. Your success plan is the key. So look at this analogy. We had an idea we want to have a house. We, we, we create a visualization of the house through our imagination, through research, and we have a picture of the house exactly how we want it to be, the number of bedrooms, the floor, whether it's two story, one story. Well, that house will not become a reality until an architect, the person who sees the vision, draws a blueprint. And so once that blueprint is done, that's that the imagination, that blueprint is done, that's, then the plan is how to actually execute bringing the blueprint into reality. So the plan may include, this is, well, first thing we need to do, we need to dig out the foundation. So step one, the plan, dig a hole. <laughs> step two, we got to fill in the foundation with cement so that the building, so step two, fill in the foundation. And so your plan is the step-by-step -step execution of the blueprint of your house. We live our lives in a step-by-step -step execution of the blueprint that is our lives, that is our lives exactly the way we want them to be. And finally, number nine, keep going and growing. I'll say that again. Keep going and growing. Success is an evolutionary experience. One of the de definitions of success we have in the book is success is a continuous realization of a worthwhile purpose. So when you're out there, when you, when you keep growing, keep going and growing, the spiritual principle says, seek and you shall find. Knock and shall be opened. Ask and it shall be answered, but it doesn't say how long. And so when you keep going and growing, you're committed to getting the answer. You're committed to the realization of that which you desire. So when you say, I'm committed to keep going and growing, you keep that open mind. 
you overcome the fear of criticism. If you're going and growing, guarantee somebody's going to criticize. You, you, you understand the difference between positive criticism and negative criticism. You overcome that fear of failure, knowing that failure is a dress rehearsal for success. You overcome bad relationships by beginning to discern who people really are. By learning that people tell you who they, are, who they are, but sometimes our own expectations of who we want them to be is so loud that we can't hear who a person really says that they are. When we keep going and growing, winners never quit. Quitters never win. When we are always prepared to do whatever it takes for as long as it takes, then we can truly manifest the life we desire. You see, these golden keys, these nine golden keys, let me review them quickly. These nine golden keys, maybe you use the one that you need at that particular time. So that first golden key, do not procrastinate. There are times when you need to really focus on that because you find yourself backsliding and procrastinating. The second golden key, do it now. You remind yourself that there's always something you can do right now, no matter what your circumstances, no, what, no matter what your situation, there's always something you can do right now if it's, if it's just to think about what you want. The third golden key, stand on your own two feet. Be self-responsible, self-motivated, self-determined, self-functional. Number four, do not fear failure. Failure is a dress rehearsal for success. You literally, you literally fail your way to success. Number five, do not sell yourself cheaply. Know your value. Know who you really are. Know the richness that's in, within you. Les Brown always says it, there's greatness within. Number six, develop that success habit of being goal-oriented. Perfect the habit of completion, that whatever you set out to do, you get it done. Number seven, visualize your goals and believe you can attain them. Your imagination prepares the way for the manifestation of your reality. And number nine, number eight, plan your work and work your plan because your success plan is the blueprint which, if you diligently follow it, you'll create the life of your dreams. And then finally, keep going and growing, realizing that success is an evolutionary process, that you never get there. It's not an event. It's a process. Because the river of time, the river of life is constantly moving, you must constantly evolve to accommodate and take advantage of the movement. So when we can use these golden keys when we need them, where each key is a nugget in our golden bag of, of power, then we can truly start each day with a positive mental attitude. We can visualize and focus on the results we want to accomplish that day. We can carefully make our plans and write them down in great detail. We can list the things that must be done each day to accomplish our goals for that day, to accomplish our goals for that week, that month, that year. We can use every hour of every day to execute our plans effectively and produce desired results. We always produce results. Whether they are the ones we desire determines how we use these golden keys. And then at the end of each day, ask yourself, the daily question, did I do everything I could today to make tomorrow the way I want it to be? Did I do everything I could today to make tomorrow the way I want it to be? When I mean, you can answer the daily question in the absolute affirmative, yes, I did everything I could with what I had to do it with. I repeat that. Yes, I did everything I could with what I had to do it with. Then you are well on your way to the success, to the achievement, to the joy, 
to the happiness you seek and deserve in this lifetime. Always knowing that the best is yet to come. And so it is. Woo! Thank you so much for being here, for joining us today. Woo! This was some journey. So those of you who are watching on Facebook, who are watching on Instagram, I really want to thank you for being here. And I want to pay special homage to some of our super achievers. We have some, we call them the Eagles. And we have some people who really support this message. They confirm this message. We often say at the end of each message to send us some money to confirm the value that you put on this message by sending it to our cash app. And our cash app is dollar sign Herbie Mann, dollar sign H-E-R-B-Y-M-A-N. And I wanna highlight, there's so many of you that have really believed in our message and even more than believing and putting it into action. And, and I like to think of you as like the eagles, you know, eagles fly alone, they don't fly in flocks, they're special people. And so I wanna highlight a couple of our, our super eagles, our majestic eagles, Kenya Crooks and Chiquita Jones. They have really stepped up and, 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 and they have shared, listen, the Majestic Eagle, anybody who sent it more than $100, you are a Majestic Eagle because you have confirmed that you believe and you have taken this message to heart. Kenya and Chiquita, thank you so much. We have other Eagles. We have Leonard Hampton who stepped up. We have Stuart Brown who stepped up. We have Dr. Dennis Rogers and others. We'll highlight them each day, each time. But we say this, Confirm this message. Whatever you feel it's valued to you, to go to our cash app, dollar sign, Herbie Man. So once again, folks, we've come to the end of another day, the success mentorship class, number 162. We have learned the nine golden nuggets to become a success. The ball is in your hands now to use these nuggets to create the life of your dreams so that you can be what you want to be, so that you can do what you want to do, so that you can have whatever you want to have, always knowing that the best is yet to come.